Well, we do give each and every one a very warm welcome this morning. Uh, it's lovely to have you here with us, and we trust as we gather together uh, that we know uh, the Lord's loving hand upon us. So we do thank you for joining with us. Uh, it's good to have fellowship in, in these particular days when fellowship is, is scarce. Uh, it's lovely to have fellowship on these uh, Sunday mornings. As I said last week, uh, this Sunday is a wee bit different uh, because it is our missionary Sunday. We usually have the missionary coming and the missionary takes part and talks about the missionary society. So we're, we're God willing, we're doing that this morning uh, with a number of people taking part. Keith Lindsay, uh, who uh, works with Acre Gospel Mission uh, there in South America. Keith will be coming and uh, Keith will be uh, speaking to the boys and girls, giving a wee word of testimony and then talking about the work. And it's lovely to have us Andy Guy uh, in from Derry with us and Andy's going to be bringing the word uh, a little later on. So appreciate these two men for taking part uh, this morning and being a part of our service. And we trust that we'll know the Lord's blessing through the ministry and uh, uh, of Andy at the scriptures and then through Keith in the testimony and the talk about the work. So uh, we'll, we'll open in a wee word of prayer and we'll just commit our time uh, together to the Lord this morning. Let's pray. Our loving and our gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you uh, again this morning that we can gather together. We do thank you for this Missionary Sunday and we know that as, as a church and as a fellowship, uh, we look forward to these Missionary Sundays and we do thank the Lord this morning that we're, we're able to have one. The Bible says that go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And we do thank you for the tremendous message of the gospel. The scripture says it's the power of God unto salvation to all who believe and lord we thank you that the lord jesus christ came to be the savior of the world and we have a tremendous message in the church and we thank you lord for the privilege we've been able to send that message just out over the airways in these days and we just pray O oh lord that as we meet together this morning that we may know your wonderful hand upon us may we know truly that round about and underneath are your everlasting arms. Lord, our prayer this morning is that you will lead and guide and wonderfully direct our service. We thank you for everyone who has a part to play it this morning. We, we do uh, appreciate Keith and Karen and the ministry that they're involved in. And we just pray, Lord, as Keith takes part this morning, that you will wonderfully be with him. As he speaks to the boys and girls, may there be a little challenge for their young hearts and their young lives and we don't forget them and we pray lord even in these days is that you keep them safe you look after them we pray lord even in their in their uh, i suppose primitive and early years we pray lord that they will be uh, enjoying their life and lord not enduring it in the days that we're in so look after them and bless them and bless the word to their young hearts this morning we do uh, remember keith as he as he also gives a personal word of testimony talks about what the lord means and has done in his life we pray you'll be with them and then as he gives a missionary report we just pray this morning that the, the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ will be seen in and through it. We thank you for the challenge of the gospel and we thank you that it's going to the furthermost part of the earth. We thank you that we can pray for missionary work here in Donegal and we do remember those who are ministering and missioning here in our own land. But Lord, right across the land and right across the world as a whole, we pray for all missionary endeavours. And we do pray for Andy as he comes this morning to read your word and to open up your word. We pray afresh this morning that we, he will know that touch and that anointing and that, that help that only God. May that challenge that comes from your word be a help and a blessing to each and every one of us. So Lord, may everything just dovetail in together for your honour and glory. Lord, we think of those within the church fellowship and within our families fellowship. Uh, and, and Lord, with, within our neighbours and friends and those we, we pray for regularly, Lord, who are unwell at this time. And we just pray, Lord, that you will be with them. And Lord, our prayer is that you will raise them up to health and that you will raise them up to strength. You're the great physician and you're the one who can touch and can heal. So Lord, bless those who, who need any help. We think of those who mourn. We think of those who are going through difficult times. Uh, and we think of those who just need prayer. We bring them before you. And Lord, we, we collectively bring each and every one. And we pray, Lord, for all of the fellowships. And Lord, we thank you for those who are able to go on, even the far side of the borders. Andy and the folks there continue the drive-ins. We thank you for 
for blessing there. But Lord, we know this side of the border, things are locked up. So Lord, as everything goes up over the airways, we pray, Lord, you'll bless the preaching of your word. And Lord, that your word will go forth with power, with authority, and will touch hearts and touch lives. Because we ask it all in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. We, we trust that God will hear and uh, that God will answer prayer uh, in these days. As I said, with Keith and uh, Lindsay and Karen working along with Acre, uh, so Keith is going to be with us um, uh, over the, I suppose, the airwaves this morning, and uh, it's good to have him. We really do uh, appreciate him taking the time out to be able to do this. So Keith, first of all, this morning is just going to give a little thought to the boys and girls. So I'll hand over to Keith now, and he'll bring a little thought to the boys and girls. Thanks, Keith. Now, hello, boys and girls. It's really good to be able to share with you this morning. As you know, or some of you will know, that I travel across the world to different countries to work there with our missionaries. And one of the countries that I go to is the country of Brazil. Brazil is a very, very big country with many, many millions of people living there. But we work in the rainforests. Maybe some of you have been learning about the rainforests in school the, along the Amazon River. Or maybe learning about the Amazon River and all the different fish and all the different animals that are there in the forest. Sometimes it can be very, very dangerous there as well. But a number of years ago, there was a man called Pedro. And Pedro lived in the forest with his family. And of course, they didn't have all the supermarkets like we have here to go and get your food in. They would have to go out and they would have to work hard in the ground to plant their vegetables and to plant their fruit and then to go out and again harvest that in to have it to eat it. But if they, looked, if they were looking for meat, they would have to go to the river to fish or they would have to go into the forest with their gun, with their spear. And there they would have to go and they would have to find their food. All the different types of animal that they would have brought home like wild pig. Sometimes they had monkey for dinner. Now I don't know whether any of you are having monkey today for Sunday dinner or not. But they would have had to have monkey for dinner. Other types of food as well. But this man, Pedro, was walking through the forest hunting one day. And as he was hunting, he came across, away in the very heart of the forest, he came across an old run-down little house, a little wooden house. And he decided, because the door was hanging off, that he would go and have a little look inside. And as he went inside and had a look around, well, there was nothing there. The furniture was all gone. People hadn't lived there for quite a long time. The branches of the trees were coming in through the windows and, and the ivy leaves and the other leaves were coming all through and growing through it. It was dusty and dirty. But then he saw something sitting up on a shelf. And so he went and he put his hand up and lifted it down. And, and as he looked at it, there were lots of holes in it. It was a book, but there were lots of holes in it because the little termites, the little ants, they had ate their way through the pages of the book. And so he thought, well, he blew off the dust of it and had a look at it. And he opened it up and inside were lots and lots of words. And he thought, well, the people who were here, well, they mustn't have wanted this. It mustn't have meant anything to them. So he put it into his hunting bag and he took it home. When he took it home, he took it out and he began to read it. And he realized that it wasn't just a book. But he realized that it was a very special book. And this is a book that I'm sure every one of you boys and girls have in your home today. Does anyone know what it's called? Yes, you're right, it's called the Bible. The Bible, God's Word. There's not just one book, but inside the Bible, there are many books. Because inside the Bible, there are 66 books. There's two parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there are 39 books. In the New Testament, there are 27 books. So if you add 39 and 27, you get 66. Isn't that right? They're the books of the Bible. It's God's special word. And I want to tell you a little story today. Because, well, many people maybe have a Bible in their house. And, well, maybe the Bible... It just sits in a cupboard or sits in a shelf and they never look at it. And to some people today, the Bible is just a book that is empty. It's just a book with absolutely nothing in it for them. They say it's not relevant for me. I don't want to know anything about the Bible. And so it's a book that's completely empty to them. But there are other people and they've got a Bible in their house and maybe they've been to church and maybe they've been to Sunday school. 
Maybe they've been to children's club. And there they have heard some of the stories in the Bible. And the Bible is not just a book that's empty to them, but it's a book that's full of lots of different stories. And of course, they had heard that the Lord Jesus Christ went all the way to the cross and he died on the cross because of their sin. He died to take away their sin. He died to be their savior. Not only did he die on the cross, but he rose again the third day and he lives today with God as father in heaven and he's coming back again soon. And they've heard all the stories of the Bible. But it really doesn't really make sense to them. And, and sometimes they really don't understand it. You know, many people, as I say, they think the Bible is just an empty book, don't they? Some people think the Bible is just a book full of stories. But whenever we come to realise that the Bible is God's word, whenever we come to realise that the Bible is true, whenever we come to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to take away our sin and be our saviour, then the Bible becomes a book that is real, doesn't it? A book that's not just an empty book, a book that's not just full of stories, but it becomes the living word of God. I want you to pray for the people that have a Bible in their house. I want you to pray that God shows them that it's not just a book that's empty, that it's not just a book that's full of stories, but I want you to pray that the Bible will become real to them. It'll become real to maybe you today, that you will trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, that you will read God's word every day because the word of God is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. And God guides us and helps us to live our lives as we read his word and understand his word. That the Bible will be a book that is real to us and one that we want to share with our friends and our family. There are many boys and girls in the world who don't have a Bible. And one of the countries that we go to is the country of Lanzarote or the island of Lanzarote in Spain. And there we have children's camps there. And we had 50, over 50 children last year at camp. And many of those boys and girls had never, ever had a Bible of their own. They didn't have a Bible in their homes. And we had the opportunity of giving every one of those boys and girls before they left camp or during camp, they all got a Bible for themselves. And we're praying too, and we want you to pray as well, that God uses the Bible, his word, to help them to understand that they need Jesus in their lives and to put their faith and trust in him as well. So thank you so much for listening today to us. And we thank you for um, all the times that we've been up there with you in Rafo. Uh, and we thank you for praying for us and ask you to pray on and ask you again to read your Bible every day and to trust the Lord as your saviour. Thank you for listening. Well, we do thank uh, Keith uh, for giving that little thought to uh, the boys and girls this morning. And we trust uh, that you'll be able to give the boys and girls their sweets now, that they listened and they listened well and give them their wee treats and their few sweets uh, they are now so be good to them and when they're back at church we'll be able to uh, continue that little tradition I suppose that we've started now and we'll continue to give them uh, the sweets. Uh, just a couple of announcements uh, for uh, the coming week. I do appreciate Keith uh, taking part this morning and I appreciate Andy as well who's coming a little later on to bring a word and we do appreciate these two men coming uh, giving of their time and giving of their talents to help us out uh, with uh, the ministry of the word and we do make them very welcome and we do appreciate them uh, coming to help us. I want to thank Mary also you'll see to the side here there's flowers and uh, it's good to see them up and appreciate Mary and I know she puts them up there I didn't even know they were there until I came in uh, today so appreciate Mary and thank Mary just for putting them up uh, it just brings a bit of colour and it brings uh, a bit of uniformity too it's nice to always have the ladies uh, putting uh, the flowers up. I uh, do remember the couple of announcements. Sunday uh, 11.30 in the morning there on Facebook and then 11.45 on YouTube. So we'll be continuing on those different times uh, there on a Sunday morning. And then on Thursdays, quarter past eight, it's our prayer meeting and our uh, Bible study. So do take time uh, with to be with us for the Bible study and then to spend time 
in prayer as well. Uh, as I continue to say, um, please, if anybody does need anything, uh, don't hesitate to call. I've been chatting to a number of folks uh, as I'm able to get them. And, uh, but if there's anything you need or anything you'd maybe like to talk about, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a shout or give me a call. And I'd be glad to uh, be able to speak to you and help you if I can. Now, that's all uh, that's uh, for the announcements this morning. Uh, Keith is going to come now. Uh, he's going to tell a little bit about his life and his background. Uh, we hear of the missionaries in these days, but sometimes we don't know a little bit about them. I've known Keith for many years, and uh, no, I know Keith's testimony. That. So Keith's going to give a wee word of testimony, a wee bit of his life story, and then he's going to talk about the missionary work. So I'll hand over to Keith now uh, to do that at this time. Thanks, Keith. Hello folks, it's really good to be with you and be able to share something of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in my life. My name is Keith Lindsay, I'm married to Karen. We have two sons, Matthew and Jonathan. Matthew just got married there just a few months ago in lockdown and he lives with his wife Melissa over near uh, Lurgan, a place called Dollingstown. Jonathan's still here at home uh, with us. Uh, it's really good to be able to share with you. We work with Acre Gospel Mission, Acre International, and I travel to Brazil, Portugal, the Canary Islands, deputise for the mission, travel around churches normally in normal circumstances and share about the work of the mission as well as preaching the gospel in many different places as well. It's a privilege to be with you and be able to share with you uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in my life. I want to read just a few verses with you uh, uh, just now from Psalm 40, a very well-known psalm. Psalm 40 and just the first eight verses of the psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the Mary bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. In sacrifice and offerings you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offerings and sin offerings have you not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. We know that God will bless just these few verses to your hearts today. I was brought up in a lovely family. I was brought up just on the border of the north and south of Ireland. And because my father was on the police, we were moved because of security to another part of Northern Ireland where we had to move. Uh, and there um, uh, we were brought up in a church that didn't preach the gospel, a church that told us that if we came to church and read our Bibles and, and prayed, that that was enough to get to heaven. But that's not what the word of God teaches us. The word of God reminds us that it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to God's mercy that he saves us. It reminds us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves, not of works. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. And well, being brought up in that church and being brought up in a good family, there's nothing wrong with that. But my uncle and aunt, a great uncle and aunt of mine, took me along to the Baptist church in Rathfriland. And there, week after week, when I went as a little boy, I used to listen to the singing and I loved the singing and my favourite hymn in the hymn book was number 379. I still remember the number. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I had no idea what that meant. Absolutely no idea. Yet the words of that song, the seed of the words of that song were planted in my young heart. I didn't really realise what it meant. I didn't realise what it meant to be a sinner. I didn't realize what it meant that I needed to be saved. I knew the words, I knew the jargon, but I didn't understand it really as a child. We had to move again because of security reasons and we moved to the town of Banbridge. And there in Banbridge, again, going along to school, we went to a church that again, didn't preach the true gospel message. And at school, someone invited me to come along to a mission, a gospel mission, 
that was going on in the Baptist church there in Banbridge. And so I went along as a young person uh, and I loved the singing. The singing was different. The preaching was certainly different. And there night after night as I went along, God began to work in my heart as a young person. You know, I knew and heard for maybe the first time that I really needed a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't enough to have religion, but I needed a relationship with him. I needed to come to the place where I recognized that I was a sinner. I needed to recognize that without the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, that there was no way that I'd ever get into that place called heaven. And so I, I used to think as a teenager growing up, 14, 15 years of age, that I would wait until it suited me to trust in Christ. That I would wait until someday, whenever I enjoyed life and enjoyed the pleasures that were out there in life, that someday when it suited me, that I would come and put my trust and faith in the Lord Jesus. I would wait until I was 40. Because as I thought, and many teenagers think, that 40 is very old. Now looking back now, I realise that 40 is not that old. 40 is young. I wish I was back to being 40 again. Again, I was invited along to a gospel mission one evening. It was the 19th of May in 1985. Uh, and there I went along to the mission in Rich Hill. It was in a tent. And the Reverend Sam Workman, a very well-known evangelist in Northern Ireland, was preaching in that mission. There were many folk there singing. There was a choir singing. And then he began to preach. And he read from Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15. That verse says that whosoever was not found written in the book of life, would be cast into the lake of fire. And as he preached that night, I realized that my name wasn't in the book of life. I realized that if I ever hoped to be in heaven, that I would need to come to that place where I turned from my sin. Although I wasn't a very sinful person, I was a good moral upright person, but that I was a sinner because the word of God reminds us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Romans, it also tells us there that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, and that night I remember sitting and God really challenged in my heart uh, and coming to realize that I really needed to be saved, that I really needed to come and trust the Lord Jesus as my saviour. And as I sat there, I remembered that just not very long before that, my cousin and my uncle were killed in a car accident. I realized that life maybe didn't go on forever. I had to come to realize that life could be short. My cousin was just 22 years of age. My uncle was just 33 years of age. And I realized that the word of God reminds us as appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. That night, as God challenged my heart, I, I remember the Reverend Workman making an appeal and asking if anyone wanted to trust in Christ as their savior to put up their hand. But I was too shy to do that. And as I sat and listened to what he had to say, I remember coming out of the tent at the end of the meeting. I remember kicking the tent peg, maybe hoping the tent would fall down and saying to the folk who were with me, you know, tonight I can't go on any longer. Tonight I need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. I need the assurance of a promised home in heaven. I need the assurance of my sins that have been forgiven. I, I need to know for sure that if death comes or Jesus comes as he could, that I'm ready to go to that place called heaven for all of eternity. And well, in simple childlike faith, a little caravan at the back of that tent where I just knelt down before the Lord and I cried out to the Lord for his mercy and for his salvation. And the word of God tells us where Jesus said, him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Isn't that a wonderful promise? to have tonight, that if we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if we repent of our sin and receive him by faith as our personal saviour, that he comes in, that he becomes our saviour, that we become children of God, not because of the church we belong to, not because of how much money we've paid into the church or the good things that we have done. But as I said already, as Ephesians reminds us, for by grace, God given us what we don't deserve. By grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves, not of works. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. We have nothing to boast in tonight, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he went all the way to the cross of Calvary, and there he gave his life for me, that I might have eternal life. But you know, coming to Christ 
And trusting in Christ is not just the end. It's just the beginning, isn't it? It's the beginning of a new walk with God. It's the beginning of getting to know God, of getting to know the word of God, and certainly to know the will of God for our lives. And again, as a young person growing up in church, we were taught that if we wanted to serve the Lord, we needed to do what God wanted in our lives. We needed to know the will of God for our lives. If God wanted us to be a doctor, if God wanted us to be a bricklayer, if God wanted us to be an evangelist, to, to be a pastor in the church, we, we needed to know the will of God for our lives. That God had got a special, perfect plan for each one of us. And so as a young person, I began to pray that God would show me exactly what he wanted me to do. Now, believe it or not, and I know a lot of people don't believe this, but I was a very, very shy person. I helped in a good news club in our church. And there at the Good News Club, I played the guitar for the choruses. But if they'd asked me to do anything, I think it would have just dropped on the spot. I, I didn't want to be a speaker. I didn't want to be up front. I was happy to be in the background. We went along to a youth meeting one night. And there there was a, a missionary sharing there from uh, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. Where Jesus said, pray that the, the, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest field. And as we listened to him speak that night, he was talking about the mission field of France that he was in, working in, about the great need there was in France spiritually. And he challenged us as young folk and he said, young person, maybe God wants you to go. And I remember sitting there thinking, but Lord, I'm, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't stand in front of people and speak. Some people said, I don't know when to stop speaking. But back then, I, I, I just couldn't have stood in front of people and spoken. I remember saying, Lord, look at so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. They could go. Look at the abilities they have. Look at the gifts they have. But God said, I want you to go. And so God, God began to do another work in my heart and life. And God began to show me the perfect plan that he had. The chorus says, there's no peace, no joy, no thrill, but walk, like walking in God's will. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. And so as I began to pray that God would show me the way forward, I went along to the Faith Mission Bangor Convention that year. It was 1986. And there I asked God to speak to me. And God very clearly over that weekend of meetings, in many different meetings, God challenged my heart and spoke to my heart. From Matthew 28, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. And lo, I am with you always. And so I applied to the Faith Mission Bible College in Edinburgh. And there I was accepted for the October uh, 1986. And there I went along to the Bible College for two years. Served the Lord for four years, working as an evangelist with the Faith Mission here in Northern Ireland. And then Karen, my wife and I, got married in 1992. The Faith Mission sent us to the Yorkshire Dales in England. We were there for four years, serving the Lord there. And again, God gave us... Uh, so many blessings there. One of the blessings, of course, was our oldest son, Matthew, that was born whenever we were there. When Matthew was born, he was critically ill. They told us he was going to die in the neonatal unit in Lancaster. But, you know, God began to work and God began to answer prayers. Many people right across the province of Northern Ireland, right across England and Scotland and further afield, right across the world, as they began to pray for Matthew, God began to touch little Matthew as a baby and raised him back to health and strength again. He's just got married a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, during the lockdown period here in Northern Ireland. And uh, we're so thankful to the Lord for him and for his wife and for what they mean to us and for their walk with God as well. It, it thrills our hearts to see that too. We worked there for four years in the Yorkshire Dales and then the Lord called us uh, again uh, from there. The mission moved us up to Aberdeen so we uh, there were there for three weeks whenever our youngest boy Jonathan was born. So we have an English son and we have a Scottish one. We have no Northern Ireland ones or no Irish ones. Um, but we're very thankful to the Lord for, again, the blessings that we had of working in the east coast of Scotland and working in the Shetland Islands. And we have still many precious friends in Scotland there today, as well as England, that we keep in touch with uh, over and over again. But you know, we were happy in the faith mission. We were content in our work there in Aberdeen, the east coast of Scotland. I, I saw the rest of my life working there with the faith mission. 
We never wanted to come back to Northern Ireland again, but it's amazing how God again steps into our situation. You know, so often we're reminded of Peter in the boat and how Peter, that in the middle of the storm, he got out of the boat, didn't he? The other disciples stayed there. We, we, we often talk about Peter uh, sinking when he got out and walked on the water, but the other disciples, they had not the faith to get out of the boat. And God said, I want you to get out of your comfort zone. I want you to get out of your boat. And I want you to, again, follow me. I have another plan, another part of the plan for your life. And so the Lord brought us back to Northern Ireland again. And the Lord brought us to Rathfryland, to the church that I went to as a little boy, to be the pastor there in Rathfryland for nearly six years there serving the Lord. Again, we look back in those days. Sometimes they were difficult, but yet we look back in those days and we thank the Lord for the privilege it was of being able to serve the Lord there in Rathfryland and to see souls come to know Christ as their personal saviour too. Our hearts were very much in mission work and just over 15 years ago the work of Acre approached us, Acre Gospel Mission approached us and asked us to consider coming into the work and heading up the work here in the UK and travelling out with teams and so on abroad. And again, we're so thankful to the Lord for what God has done over the last 15 years of serving the Lord with Acre. We travelled to Brazil. Our mission was started 85, nearly 85 years ago by a man called William and his wife Margaret McComb from Belfast. They heard the call of God and they took up the call of God to go into the unknown in those days. The jungle part of, the, of Brazil and the Amazon River in Brazil to take the message of the gospel. And still today our missionaries are serving the Lord there in Brazil, in the Acre state of Brazil, in Amazonas, along the Amazon River, in the city of Manaus, and right across three and a half thousand miles to the very northeast corner of Brazil, a little place called Rio Grande do Norte, where we have 11 families serving the Lord there with us uh, at the moment. I was in Brazil in January, and thank you for praying. I know that many of the folk uh, pray for us, many folk pray for the work of Acre, and uh, in Brazil in January, and uh, there with uh, all of our different workers uh, in the northeast of Brazil and in the city of Manaus, been able to share with them, and we're so thankful for what God is doing there. I came home with a heart that was so thrilled, a heart that was excited to see what God is doing, to see new church plants opening up and souls coming to know Christ as their Savior. That thrills our hearts as we see what God is doing in other parts of the world. We travel to Portugal at, uh, at least three times a year. And of course, because of the COVID pandemic, coronavirus at the moment, we're not able to travel anywhere. Uh, over the last number of months, uh, back since January, I haven't been able to travel to Portugal or to the Lanzarote either. Uh, we are missing the friends there. We're missing the work there. Um, but um, we do ask you to continue to pray for us as we uh, continue to, to serve the Lord in these countries. If you're interested, if you know young people that are interested in coming on teams with us, well, you don't have to be young. I did say once at a convention, if you can walk and breathe, you can come with us. And a lady who's 74 came to me afterwards and she said, I'm 74, I can walk and breathe. Can I come on your outreach team? And so that lady has come right up until she was over 80 on our teams to help us as we spread the message of the gospel. Can I challenge you as I close? Can I challenge you if you don't know Christ as your personal saviour, if you've never come to trust him, why did you come and trust him today? Because there is no greater joy than knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. In a world around us that seems to be hopeless and helpless at the minute with all that's going on, we're so thankful for the hope that we have in Christ. We're so thankful for the joy that we have of knowing Christ and knowing for sure that whether death comes as it could to any of us at any moment, or whether Christ comes as he could at any moment. And certainly as we look through the scriptures, we see that the coming of the Lord is getting very near. Certainly by all that's going on around us with pandemics, with wars and rumours of wars and so on, just like the people in Noah's day. It's just like that today, isn't it? The word of God reminds us, but as the days of Noah were, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. And friends, it's important that we're ready. It's important that we're prepared to meet God and to know Christ as our personal saviour. He's not the one, just the one who died for us, but he's the one who rose again on the third day. And the Lord Jesus today is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's the one who's making intercession for us. He's the one who knows us. 
who knows our hearts, he knows our burdens, he knows our concerns, he knows our heartaches, he knows all that we're going through in these difficult days. But he's not only the one who knows, but he's the one who wants to come alongside us, the one who wants to help us in our time of need, that we can cast our care on him because he cares for us. In closing, let me again challenge you. Do you know Christ? Are you walking in his will if you do know Christ? Maybe God wants you to go into the world and preach the gospel. Maybe God wants someone that's listening to go and be a missionary serving God, whether it's here at home, whether it's abroad. Will you take up the call of God and the challenge that God gives to all of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel? You know, give God your life because God can do far more with it than you can. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share just a little of what God is doing and what God has done for me. The Lord has done great things. We're off. We are glad. Keith doing uh, that for us this morning and I trust like Keith uh, that you have a testimony uh, to God's uh, saving power and God's changing power in your life and in these days just a little challenge uh, to be doing something for the Lord and it's important and do continue to pray for Acre Gospel, pray for the work and uh, as I say we're going to be sending a gift on your behalf to Acre Gospel and to the work there so just thank you for that and thank you for your giving in these days, it's very much appreciated uh, towards the work but we'll be sending a gift uh, to Acre Gospel uh, to help with uh, the finance of the work. Now it's lovely to have Mr Andy Guy with us from Derry. Andy uh, has come out to be here with us and we really do uh, appreciate Andy coming. And I'm going to hand over to Andy now and Andy's going to read the scriptures to us, he's going to preach the word and then he's going to close in a word of prayer this morning. So I'm going to hand over to Andy now and thank him very much for coming and being here with us on this Sunday morning. Thanks Andy. Well, I do want to thank Reverend Marvin Carter for his warm words of welcome this morning. It's a joy and a pleasure for me to be back here in Liverpool today, to be amongst you and, and taking part in this service. And I trust that what will be said and done this morning will be a tremendous blessing to us all. <clears throat> now, the Word of God this morning I'm sharing in the book of Psalms. We will turn to Psalm 40 and we'll read a few verses together. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my going. And he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts are which are to us, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And we know the Lord will bless his own word this morning. 
to our heart. I just want to share a few things this morning with you, especially in the day in which we live. And I believe we can take great comfort from this psalm this morning. Now as we read the psalm this morning, the first thing we see here is David. David is in the pit. David is in an awesome place. He's absolutely helpless where he is today. For David, he can do nothing for himself. And you know, sometimes today maybe you're in the same situation. Maybe for you today, you're in a pit. Maybe you're like David, you're just helpless. And I just want to mention a few this morning that we might take great comfort and encouragement from. You know, as we look at the pit this morning, the first thing we find, it's a dark pit. And that's why, I, that's why the Word of God says in verse 2, it says, He brought me up also. And I know the old enemy today, he loves us to be in a pit. Now I want to say the pit is dark. It doesn't matter which way you look, there's no light whatsoever. And it's an awesome place to be. And not only is it a dark pit, but it is a lonely pit. You see, we find the psalmist, he's here, he's here alone in the pit. There's no one else with him, he's alone there. But you know, not only we, as we look at today the loneliness of a pit, it's a fearful pit. And I want to say to you today, this, this morning, at Lonely Pit, maybe today you're in a lonely pit. Maybe you are in a place today where no one else knows, only but yourself. And you know, it's a fearful place to be. It's a fearful place where you're in today. And you know, you look today and you seem to say, well, there's no way out. And the old enemy himself will come to you and say, <clears throat> there's no hope for you. There's no hope whatsoever. And the old enemy says, why don't you finish? There's no point. There's no point in going on in the life in which you're living. You see, the enemy's out to destroy. But you know also in that pit, there's the doubts in the pit. Maybe while you're there today in the place, you have many, many awesome doubts and the old enemy brings them before you. And also we find the depression in the pit. And as we think in these things this morning, maybe this, this speaks to you this morning, you're saying this is, this is where I am. This is where I am and I feel that there's no hope or hope for me in this, in, in this world. It's an awesome place to be and I just want to be out of it. But you know, I want to say this morning that as we continue to look at the Word of God, there's great hope. Praise God this morning, there's great hope for you no matter what pit you find yourself in. And you know, there's another, there's another pit today and you know, it is the pit of sin. And it says in Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now we're all in that pit. All have sinned. Every one of us. Every one of us was in that pit of sin. And they, it was, and we'll, there are many in it today. But you know, for the psalmist, we find here, we pick up great encouragement. The psalmist, it says, he waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me. And heard my cry. He's crying out to God. This is the only place for the psalmist. This is the only place where he can find help. As he looks around that pit. It's a merry old pit. He's going deeper every day. But you know. He looks up. And he cries out. You know it's the same with you today. As you look around no matter which way you turn. There's nothing but trouble in this old world. There's, it's an awesome place to be. Where we're in today. As we think there of the fearful pit, it's fearful. There are men and women and young people today, they're living in fear. Not only, not only here today, but right across our whole land today. <clears throat> men and women are living in fear because of the COVID. And yet, here we find, here we find the psalmist is in a helpless, helpless position. And that's where we are today. We, as sinners, we are in a helpless position. But thank God, we don't need to stay there because we can do as the psalmist done. The psalmist David, he, he cried out. He cried out unto the Lord. That's the only one you can turn to. That's the only one who can help you in such a situation that you find yourself in as the Lord. And the psalmist cries out. He gives us great comfort. 
because it says God heard him God heard him and that's the tremendous thing about it and just let's be encouraged today as, as we look at as we look today as we, we think where we are today and where you are I don't know what pit you're in but I can assure you this today that if you call upon the Lord then the Lord will bring you out of that pit just as he did with the psalmist and as we read on this morning we look here at the person he took me from a fearful pit you see today it's only the Lord can do this you know today it's personal an individual in the pit and here the psalmist is in a completely helpless situation but the psalmist realizes that even though he looks around him in all the darkness there's one place that the psalmist begins to look he looks up where his help comes from above and he cries out unto the Lord and he cries out unto him because there's no one else to cry out to and in your situation this morning you know nobody can help you in the situation that you find yourself in but you know when you cry out unto the Lord it doesn't matter what your situation is because with God all things are possible when you call out to him just as like a psalmist he will answer and I don't care what situation you find yourself in today the Lord is able to lift you out of wherever you are the God is able able far above all to do things that you might never even think or do what a great God we have today one in whom we can turn to even in the situation that we find ourselves in today in this old world and that you may find today that you're lonely you're all alone and there no one cares but I can assure you today from the word of God that God cares you may be fearful today and you find that there's no hope for you but I want to say today I can turn you to one today and that's God himself he's waiting to hear your cry he's waiting for your cry to him he's waiting come on to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest it's not I might give you rest but he says I will give you rest you can have peace of mind today no matter what situation that you're in when you come to the Lord and you call out to him and ask for his forgiveness we look at the person he took me from a fearful pit as I say it's personal it's an individual can you imagine today as you, as you sit here today as you, as you think on, on David he's in an awesome place he's in the pit and there's no way out and there, no one can help him and but, he, but you see he cried out unto the Lord he cried out to the only place where he could find help and you know I want to say the power not the power to lift him out of the pit you see today when he cried out it was the Lord who took him out of the pit no matter what your situation as I say today if you call out unto the Lord the Lord will lift you out of that situation you have listened far too long to the lies of the old devil he's telling you you're no good there's no hope for you in this life or nothing else but I want to assure you this morning from the word of God that there is help and God's able above all to bring you out of the situation that you find yourself in today and your life can be made new all power is given unto me and God here he lifts him out of the pit can you see the psalmist today as he cries out in that lonely lonely pit and God reaches down and he lifts him up now I want to say today to you no matter how low today you find that you're in the pit today you're not too low that the Lord can't reach you he's able to reach you reach wherever you are today you know he brings the psalmist this is the encouragement he brings the psalmist he lifts him up he takes David and he takes him out of the pit and he the purpose is, is he put his feet on the rock what a place to set David. He lifts David out of that awesome, miry old pit and he sets his feet upon the rock. And the rock reminds us today of security. The psalmist is now secure. He's on the rock. He won't sink no more. He's on the rock. The Lord has put him on the rock. But you know, he's put a new song in his mouth. He's changed his whole being from a man down in the pit crying. A man calling out, a man with no hope, 
with everything seemed lost when he cried out unto the Lord the Lord reached down and he lifted him out of his situation and he placed his feet upon the rock and he put a new song in, it, in his mouth and you know many many will see it and, and shall fear and trust in the Lord and you know what you think in the psalmist today is you think I wonder what that new song would be in his mouth and it only could be this it only could be one thing a new song on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand and you know that's the message because if you're standing anything else other than the rock Christ Jesus then you're on sinking, sinking sand it, 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 you have no hope but praise God today you can be on solid ground on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand you know you today this is the good news for you today you can have the same experience as the psalmist David that can be your experience today as you read that word word there and as you look at the psalmist and where he is he's just a man like ourselves and you can have that same experience today in your life and don't let the old devil cheat you out of it all you have to do is call on to the Lord you know isn't it, isn't it really so simple call on to the Lord and the question is maybe you're asking us asking today will he answer and I can truly tell you today with the assurance from the word of God he will answer because if we read Jeremiah 33 and 3 it says call call on to me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which I know is not of and there the assurance today that God keeps his word he can't break his word he says call and I will answer and show you great and mighty things and what would those mighty things be that he can change your whole life and your whole being and you see today you can come today and the reason you can come today is we were looking there at the psalmist in that sinful pit as I was reminding you that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God you know I want to tell you today that sin came into the world and for you maybe you say well you know it's not my fault that I was born in sin and you're right but you know back there when when God placed Adam and Eve in the garden he made this world he made it perfect but you know they sinned in the garden and because of man's fall in the garden then wall of sin and come short of the glory of God today we're a sinner we have to accept today that we're a sinner but you know the good news is this that Jesus died on the cross on Calvary the Lord Jesus Christ he left the realms of glory to come down unto this old sin cursed world and I'll never know why he came down to pay a debt he didn't owe and I owed a debt I couldn't pay but Jesus came and he paid that debt for me on Calvary's cross and I just want a moment this morning to just remind you can you see the Lord Jesus as he climbs up Calvary's mountain he's more married than any other man blood from his face hairs plucked from his face and yet he, he goes there to take your place and take my place because we owed a debt we couldn't pay the Lord Jesus laid down his life on Calvary and I want to say to you that he hung there between two thieves and you know the most, the most of all that he's been coming through but there on Calvary's mountain there was darkness over all the earth you know the reason there was darkness over all the earth was because God turned his back on his only son God couldn't look on sin your sin and my sin was placed upon him on Calvary's cross he was there paying the debt for you and me that you and I might go free your debt is paid today your debt is paid today the Lord Jesus paid for it in Calvary's cross but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin your sin can be forgiven today and that's my message to you you can you can go free today you can have a great assurance today not only of assurance here having the Savior with you each day because he promises 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. But you know you can have that great assurance that when you leave this scene of earth, that you'll be with him throughout all eternity. He paid the utmost price for you. And all he says to you today is come. I ask you today, will you call upon him? Will you do as the psalmist did? The psalmist was in a helpless, David was in that helpless position. And he called unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him and answered his prayer. And I can assure you this morning from God's word, that when you call, then he'll answer. And he'll give you, a, not a new start, but he'll give you a brand new life. And he'll walk with you each, each day. And as you go through this journey of life, whatever's left, spared to us or whatever's left, then you'll have one who will be with you every day because he has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then when that final day comes, when our call comes, then we'll go to be with him and the glory to see the Saviour face to face. What a beautiful day, what a great future we have. Today I say to you, don't listen anymore to the old eyes of the enemy. But I plead with you this morning, call unto the Lord. He says, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things. Call today, call upon him. He'll answer your prayer. Come and trust him and start life in you from today. And one day have that great assurance that you'll be in heaven. Thank you for listening this morning. We will just bow in a word of prayer. Our loving Father, we give you thanks for the time we have spent together in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your help this morning. Lord, I just pray today for all who have listened. Lord, it's only you who knows where they are. It's only you who knows where their situation is. But Lord, we realize today that from your word, that no matter where they are, no matter how deep in sin they are today, that you're the one who can lift them from that miry pit and put their feet upon the rock and put a new song in their mouth. You can change their life completely, Lord. And I pray today, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you'll call men and women and boys and girls to yourself, that they'll come today and trust you, Lord, as their own and personal Saviour. I thank you, Lord, for this time, time we have spent together. We just lift our heart in praise to you. Lord, be with us and keep your hand upon us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. There's a deep, silent river flowing just beyond, and its waters are deep and so wide. It's as dark as the night, but mine eyes see the light way down by the Dear friend.